up you guys welcome back to southern therapy podcast i am your host danielle bailey and i am back you guys like welcome to my new people welcome to my old people welcome to my ogs that's been riding with me for the longest that has listened to the episodes that has gained something from the episodes like yo Thank you so much, you guys. Thank y'all so much for listening to the um, podcast. If y'all can, please start leaving um, reviews so that I can see them um, and stuff like that. So, because I really want to know, like, re- leave reviews or either email me. Um, email me at Southern Therapy um, Podcast at gmail.com. That is Southern Therapy Podcast at gmail.com. So that I can just like give me some feedback and stuff like that. I want to know, like, if the podcast is helping you, like, where do you think that I can improve? Like, whatever it is, like, yo, just drop me some feedback and stuff like that because I really want to know, um, a little bit about who's who all is looking. I mean, who all is look, not looking, but who all is listening to the podcast and stuff like that. So I am welcoming feedback. Like I really feel like I need feedback from you guys. So please just email me um, and let me know um, what's what you what you like, what you dislike, um, and stuff like that. So that we can try to just make this um, podcast as best as it can. So yes, thank y'all so much. I want to say this. this this podcast is brought to you by currently building generational wealth, um, dot com. That is my little baby. That's where I have created journals, um, a prayer journal for, let me get it together y'all. So it's called currently building generational wealth, a prayer journal to break generational, generational curses. I also have a currently building generational wealth daily planner. And I also have a currently building generational wealth budget planner like yo i'm so excited about those products and stuff like that i know that i have not really talked about them um all that much like i talked about them when i first got them um and stuff like that but i just haven't really just like really broadcast really talked about them in depth or really kept promoting them like i should and stuff like that so i really need to get back to that and i'm really not i'm just gonna be honest with y'all I'm going back and forth with these products um, because they're not doing the numbers that I anticipated them to do. And it may be because I'm just not broadcasting or like I'm just not um, marketing and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like how and um, just trying to really get them out there, y'all. So you probably will just start hearing me because truthfully, I mean, truth be told, y'all, let me just be real. Sometimes I feel like the more I push them or constantly push, push them out there, I feel like I get on people's nerves. Like, they they may be like, oh, my God, like, you know, like, I keep seeing her product and I'll listen it. But, like, that's just negative self-talk that I need to um turn around because it could be, oh, yeah, let me go order this. I forgot to order Danielle product. Oh, yeah, let me go do this. I forgot to do this. So, you know, ne- I never know. So, I'm just going to start really promoting and pushing the product a little bit more so that people will actually, you know, purchase them. So, um, I probably start doing that this, well, probably tomorrow. I just start creating, I want to purchase, um, some Facebook ads and stuff like that. So I think I'll do that. But nonetheless, y'all, what's going on, my good people? How are y'all doing during this whole COVID-19, um, fiasco (laughs) not fiasco but pandemic that's going on right now y'all this thing has i talked about it last week now i'm talking about it again this week um it is sweeping especially in louisiana y'all it is sweeping our state our state is the fastest growing state out of all of 50 states is from what i understand and i want to say this it's not necessarily just our state it's New Orleans, okay? Point blank, period. It's not oh, the entire state because this thing, COVID-19, it really hit New Orleans. New Orleans just had Mardi Gras and people come from all over. And so with COVID-19 being out and them not really knowing, 
And so Mardi Gras happened. So of course it really started spreading. And of course it's just now coming to surface. So that's why New Orleans have such a high case because of the simple fact of Mardi Gras. And when so many people was down there, so many people was around each other, not, and we not really, we I'm not going to say that, um, because personally I believe COVID-19 has been here for a while since last year. I feel like the federal government knew about it. I feel like people knew about it. They just didn't. They, they just didn't say anything, you know, I just can't believe them. You know, y'all didn't know this, that all of a sudden this outbreak, this pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Just not happening. No, y'all knew that was happening. Y'all just didn't have a name for it or what y'all probably did have a name for it. We knew what was going on with China. Like, so like, yo, ugh. calm down there. Like, yo, I'm getting upset because I feel like the government knew like the government officials, y'all knew that this was going on a long time ago. So like, it don't act like y'all, oh my God, it's new to Louisiana. I mean, not to Louisiana, but to United States. Come on, bro. Y'all just be real or whatever. But nonetheless, y'all just say that y'all did not prepare. Like, yo, we seen what was going on with China. We seen that, you know what I'm saying? And we still didn't prepare. We did not prepare. Like, yo, we seen what was going on with China. We see what is... And then, you know, the thing is, I'm not going to just blame our government. I'm also going to blame people. Not necessarily blame people, but... Yo, people, take responsibility and start practicing social distancing. Like, y'all, I'm not afraid of this thing. Like, and I'm not, like, anxiety-driven or nothing like that. But what I am using is wisdom to know that this thing is so easily, so easily passed. And even people who are practicing good hygiene, washing your hands all the time, set hand sanitizer, all of this other kind of stuff that people are practicing, like, they practicing that and still getting it. Still, <laughs> so I know somebody still got it, you know, so it's, it's easily passed and we have got to do better with standing home and, um, and all that great stuff. So y'all practice social distancing, like only go out when you need stuff. Y'all went to Walmart today. I'm recording this on Tuesday. Um, and I went to Walmart today and y'all, when I tell you I created a list and I created a list of the um the stuff that I need, I made sure I put it in order the way that the store goes so I don't have to be in there that long. Y'all, y'all would have thought the way that I was going up in Walmart and how fast I was walking, child, y'all would have thought I was out there on the um on the treadmill or something. Like, I don't wanna be out here. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to be at home. I want to be safe. I don't want to be out here in the streets where it's just so easily passed. You know, somebody could have just coughed and I walk right up right behind them with the droplets and stuff like that are still lingering in the air. And then I done got it. And, and then I know y'all are like, Danielle, it's not that, you know, you may be over, overreacting, but it is serious. And that's how it's really being spread it so easily. So, like, yo, we have to take this serious. If y'all are not taking it serious, y'all need to. Like I said, I'm not driven by anxiety or fear. Like, I still go places when I need to go places. Um, It's not going to. And I don't wear a mask and I don't wear gloves. Because it's just like some of them masks, they won't protect you. And, some, and then with the gloves and stuff like that, if you don't change them often, um, they still not going to protect you because they're contaminated too. So... Just practicing more social distancing, staying at, staying at home, staying in my little house. Um, tomorrow, I probably will start work, walking outside just to get outside. It was so pretty today, y'all. Um, but just to get outside a little bit more, walking and um, with walking is going to just, um, what I feel like walk, walking is just going to help me get some vitamin D, get some sun and stuff like that. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. You know, let's practice more social distancing, but let's get out and go places like a walking trail. Like you still can go to a walking trail and stuff like that. You know where you can walk and, um, 
just get some fresh air. Like the CDC actually recommend that something because you just don't want to continue to be cooped up in the house. Like, yo, go to the park, do some little walking, you know, making sure the person y'all stay six feet away and stuff like that. So, and there's a walking trail right next to my house. So that's why I'm just like, yo, I'm just going to go over there tomorrow, do a little lap or two and just enjoy the sunlight and come back and, you know, do the work. Cause I am working from home. Like I'm doing, um, telehealth and stuff like that. So y'all, that's, I done went off on a whole 10, 10 minute tangent about, um, COVID-19. So that's, that's what's going on with me and COVID-19. Like, yo, I am weathering the, the COVID-19, um, era and just know y'all that this, this isn't new. Like I want, if you are faith based and you are listening to this, like this is, this reminds me of the plagues that are in Exodus 10. I mean, not Exodus 10, but that are in the book of Exodus. This isn't new. These are plagues that God, God sent plagues back then to, um, so that, so that Pharaoh can let his people go and stuff like that. And so if God kept the Israel, Israelites, what make you think that he will not keep us? And God gave the Israelites stuff that they needed to do and the wisdom, like with the, um, when he did the Passover, you know, put the blood over the door so that he doesn't kill, you know, your, um, your firstborn. Those are things that God told them to do. And that's like, that's wisdom. And that can be equivalent to us washing our hands, to us practicing social distancing and stuff like that. Like this is wisdom that's being passed on, wisdom that we need to do. Wisdom is applied knowledge. So it's not, we learn knowledge of, you know, that the more we wash our hands, the more we, um, you know, practice social distances and stuff like that, the more we can actually stop the spread and flatten the flat, as I say, flatten the curve of the, um, of the virus. So practice that apply wisdom to this situation. I'm not saying be afraid. I'm not saying have anxiety, stress and worrying. No, I'm saying practice, practice wisdom. And then if you do get it, practice more wisdom and quarantine yourself. So that you don't spread it to other people. This thing is spread it so easily. And I think that was the, um, that's what's kind of scary. How easily it is able to be spread it. You know, people are dying from this man. Um, Alexandria got its first case. Now I'm not going to say first case, but the first case where it was actually tested, um, was last week. And it was three people that tested positive. One died. That was last week. Going into this week, now they have a total of eight people. They had eight more people come forward that was test, this tested, you know, positive. So, like, we went from three last week. We got eight this week. So, do you see how easily this stuff is passed? And so, you know, I just decided for myself and for my protection and for my clients protection and stuff like that, we just going to do telehealth. So I am remote and stuff like that, just working from the house and things of that nature. So y'all please, 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 please practice, um, social distances and stuff like that. So get off and moving off of COVID-19 y'all like, let's move to something else. Cause I know y'all are tired of hearing about it. Um, what's been going on with y'all lives? You know, tell me about it. I'll tell you about mine because y'all love to hear about mine. But, um, so what's, what's been going on for Danielle? The last couple of weeks have been, they've been okay. I'm not gonna lie. They've been like, okay. Like I'm not a, I'm, I'm a homebody anyway. So this whole stand at the house is not a problem for me, child. If anything, it has been a blessing because I've been able to come back to Shreveport, sleep in my own bed, not stay at my mom's house because I have to work. Y'all, this whole, the way my practice is running right now, it may change when your girl, when all this is over, it may change. Like I may do more telehealth appointments and stuff like that and things. So um, but yeah, life is just going, I'm going to say this life is great. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to sit up here and just feel bad because I say life is great. Um, 
because like I'm really fighting to make sure that life be great. Like I'm really getting up in the morning. I'm really praying. I'm really trusting. I'm really believing. I'm really going to going before the throne of God boldly and making my requests be made known. Like I'm really out here trying to keep my sanity, trying to keep my peace. So, um, like last week, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Let me tell y'all what happened. So last week, I had I was talking to somebody on the phone and they were a client. And um, y'all, when I tell you who Jesus, when I tell you that person had like <laughs> had worked my last nerves, y'all. I swear I'm not gonna even lie, had worked my last nerve. And so it was just like I had when I got off the phone with them, I was just like, okay. Let me go eat maybe because I haven't eaten lunch. Um, it will help me, right? It'll help my nerves calm down and stuff like that. So ate lunch. No, I still was kind of worked up. I, so, you know, I was just like, you know what? Hold up. I realized if I, if y'all, if, if I never tell y'all anything, y'all need to rem remember this. Peace cannot be taken by man. No peace. Man did not give you peace. Okay, God gave you peace. So man cannot take your peace. What you can do is give your peace up. And oftentimes we give our peace up because somebody has made us mad. So when you give your peace up, it's also your responsibility to go back and snatch it back. So when I realized, yo sis, you didn't gave your peace up. You didn't gave it, gave it to that person. And you know, now you worked up now you, you know what I'm saying? You can't focus because you so upset, you know, you upset. So I was just like, you know what? Boom. Got it. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let me do a little meditating meditation and let me center myself back. Let me go back and get my peace. And so this is what I'm saying. Like I had, I'm real. When I say that I'm working towards making sure I stay, I keep my peace. I, um, and I just stay in the will of God and stuff like that. That was a prime example of me giving up my peace to somebody and going back and snatching it. Like, nah, not, not today. I see the enemy. Not today. We not finna get worked up over this. Go back, get it, prayed, meditated for about five minutes, centered myself, came back and was just like, let's go on. Let's go on throughout the day. So like, that's what I'm really and truly encouraging you guys to doing this whole chaos that we're having. Like, yo, and I'm here for you guys. Like, yo, I'm here to speak life. Okay. If you don't get anything from this podcast, I want you to always come here and hear me speak life into this situation. Even when I am going through my own self, like, yo, this right here, this too shall pass this isn't new to God. God has already ordained this. God already knew about it before it came. And God started preparing his people anyway. If you really start looking at your life and stuff like that, if you started making changes that you did not understand and you really started making those changes and you was just like, God, I didn't know that was God preparing you. God never, okay? Like, yo, God never springs something on us and we are not prepared for it. He ain't that kind of God. He is not that kind of God. We may not know per se in the beginning. Oh, God was preparing me for this. We, we may not know. I'm going to say this. One of my friends called me today. Shout out to PA. Like she's, we call ourselves the hope dealer. She's another therapist in Alexandria. So she called me today. And so she was like, Danielle. Hi. She said, I want, I called you because it dropped in my spirit. And it was like nines. It's like, it was like early in the morning. So I was like 9.30 because it was right before my 10 o'clock appointment. And so she was like, you know, she was like, this dropping in my spirit and stuff like that. And so she was just like, you know, I was reading on Facebook where it was saying what well, um, Trump has said that not only is this is a global, you know, it's a global, global crisis, a health crisis. It's also going to be a financial crisis as well. And so she was just like, they're going to need you. People are going to need you when this is all settling down. And so I was like, wait a minute, what you say now? What you say now? You know how the old folks say, hold up, hold up, bring it back. What you say now? Let me, let's talk about this. She was like, I'm telling you, she was like, people are going to need you. 
And so I was like, okay, wait a minute now. Let's under, let's break it down a little bit. And so she was like, you remember how you have your whole financial, um, financial therapy masterclass and stuff like that. How you say that God gave it to you and all this other kind of stuff he gave you. And I was like, yeah. And my, oh, I do have a financial therapy masterclass. And I was like, yeah, girl, you know, she was like, people are going to join there. She was like, I'm telling you, all this stuff has, has just really fell up in my spirit. She was like, people are going to join your class. And so then she was like, you know, um, with your, she was like, you know, with your journal, your planner, your budget, you know, and your planners and stuff like that. She was like, people are going to start buying those too. And mind you y'all right now, these things, like, these are God giving gifts, ideals, okay? And they are not currently right now, they are not doing the numbers that I anticipated. Like the whole financial therapy masterclass, I swear, this came to me at six o'clock in the morning. I was pulling up at the gas station, getting ready to drive home, and God had deposited in me the um the whole financial therapy masterclass idea. The, when I say deposited in me, gave me the ideas, let me know that I had already had the tools. Y'all, when I, I'm telling you, so I'm like, oh, this is God. This is God. Yes, this is going to thrive. This is going to make it. And when I launched it, only two, only two people in the master class, two people. And I'm just like, yo, I know this is God. I know he told me to do this. I know he gave me this idea. And so she was like, you know, don't worry. She was like, it's going to come. And so I still hold the master class, y'all. I still, I hold the master class. I, um, with my two people, I record it. I send it out or either one, one person she joins in. The other person has to get the recording the next day. Record it, send it out. Keep on going about my business. It's $35 a month, y'all. For two for two master classes where you come and where you talk. Um, and we talk about finances and stuff like that. And then she was like, You remember with your your journals and your planners? She was like, you know how you put your last into these, y'all. <laughs> I put my last into these journals and into these planners. And guess what? They're not doing like I thought that they were gonna do. And so she was like, Don't worry about it. She was like, the numbers that you have, they're gonna supersede them. And I'm like, yo, I'm getting, I was getting chills. And I was like, what you, what? And so she was like, yeah. She's like, I'm telling you. She was like, you know, God just deposited in my spirit and stuff like that this morning. She was like, what you have is a great, cause like, yo, I started questioning myself about these planners. Like maybe I don't need to push them out there. Like a few people have bought the planners in a journal. And like, I literally thought about just sending them, they giving them their money back. And being like, yo, don't worry about it. You know, blah, 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 this. Like, just giving them their money back, y'all. Because it, it, it's not doing the numbers. And then again, I have to take some responsibility to it because I'm not really promoting it and stuff like this. So, some of this is falling back up on me, too. Um, so, like, yo, all of this self-doubt. Do y'all hear that? All of this self-doubt. So, um... Yeah. So, but nonetheless, y'all, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not saying I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to really go to God about this whole situation and stuff like that. But, and to ask God to continue to give me clarity and to give me understanding. Um, Do I think people are going to need this stuff after this, after this is over, COVID-19 is done? Yes. Yes. People are going to need to know how to get back on track. They're going to need to know how to organize their stuff. And so, but she, she did remind me of something. And this is, and this is like where I know, where I knew. Okay. Yeah. So I hope I, um, yeah, I'm jumping out of the place. Y'all ain't none of this on my own thing to talk, but let me go back and say, when I tell y'all that God prepares for all of this stuff, God prepares us. God always prepared. Like, this is not new to him. This is, we don't know what's happening. Oh, I, now I'm going to really get excited. So, a while back, 
when it was back in about three years ago, me and PA, we talked in our outfit. She, she came to my office and we had talked or whatever. And so, you know, we was, I was just talking about, you know, trying to make sure I get my um business up to this and that. And I was just like, you know, people are not responding. And she was like, people are going to respond. And, you know, and so like over the years, over the last three years, people have started to respond, but I have done a lot of work. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. I've done a lot of free work and stuff like that. And so, so she was just like, but people are going to respond. Don't worry about it. Keep it moving. Keep it going. Um, so I'm like, okay, people are going to respond. And so today she brought that conversation back up. And like a couple of months ago, God had told me in the first quarter, I needed to work on my policies and procedures. He was like, I need you to really work on these policies and procedures to get them out the first quarter. Like you don't need to do nothing else, but this. I have not hosted anything other than doing my financial therapy. I have not accepted any kind of speaking engagements. Like I haven't done none of that this first quarter, even though people have asked me, I was like, no, I can't do it because God told me no or whatever. And so, um, God, I was like, God just told me I can't do nothing this first quarter. And so, uh, uh, well, I can't do nothing this first quarter besides the stuff that I had already committed to. I had committed to some stuff in December. Um, December, like November, people had already asked me to do some stuff. Some stuff. So, yeah, boom. So, but God was just like, get your get your policies and procedures and stuff together because you're going to need that. You know, that's what you really operate from a business from. You know, every business got policies and procedures. And so, I'm like, okay. So, I was talking to PA one night and so she reminded me about that. And so, mind y'all, God is telling me, get these policies and procedures to go. So, I'm praying one morning during the, um, I got a, I have a business. If you're a business owner or if you're somebody that just want to join in with prayer, I have a, um, business owner prayer call at 9 a.m. every day, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I have it every day. Um, until all of this is over, look in the description box below and you will see it. Join in, come. If you want me to send you the, um, the prayer, email me and let me know and I'll send it to you whatever. And so I want to say last week I was praying and stuff like that. And so around about Thursday or Friday, it dropped in my spirit to stop praying, not necessarily stop praying, Stop, stop asking for the abundance, but ask God to prepare you for the abundance because the abundance is already here. Let me say it one more time because that, that just stop asking for the abundance because the abundance is already here. Danielle pray to God and ask him to prepare you for the abundance Ask him to help you steward, steward the abundance. And I'm not just talking about the abundance and finances, but everything that I touch, everything that I develop, help me to steward this. Help me to make sure I use wisdom with this. Whatever you give me, I need to make sure that it's the best of the best. Help me steward the abundance that's already here. Now, and I know y'all are like, okay, that's a difference in prayer. God, give me the abundance. God, help me to steward the abundance. Now I am declaring, I'm boldly declaring that the abundance is here. I'm not even, it's not even a doubt in my mind that God won't reward me with the abundance. What I'm telling God is God, help me store the abundance. That's a different type of prayer. That's a different type of emotion that is actually evoked in you where you're like, God, help me store this abundance. Like, I want to make sure that I do what I need to do. And I want to make sure that I actually steward it in a correct way. I'm not over here begging for you to give me the abundance anymore. We done moved on from that. And we done moved on from asking. We done been moved on from begging. God, please give me the abundance. No, God, help me steward the abundance. Help me to understand what the abundance is. Okay? Help me to be appreciative of the abundance that you have given me. The overflow that's going to trickle out to other people. We look at abundance and overflow as money, but sometimes it's much more than money. Sometimes it's it's wisdom. Sometimes it's knowledge that you're giving. It's the overflow that you're giving to other people and you're helping their lives. 
this is an overflow. My podcast is an overflow. My YouTube channel is an overflow. The things that I'm doing on social media, that's the overflow. Help me manage, help me steward the abundance. Girl, I done preached myself right there, y'all. I done preached myself. I just really... Y'all, I just... Girl, like, you're... No, I'm, so, I'm sorry, y'all. Like, I know I just... I just got quiet because as I'm telling y'all and as I'm just like, yo, my abundance is here. The overflow is here. The overflow that's being able to trickle down to other people that's being able to help people has been here for a while. I just need to learn how to manage it. Okay. I just need to be a better steward. I just need the policies and the procedures and the plans to make this stuff operate and operate in a fine tool area the things that come to my mind and stuff like that like yeah I have a whole bunch of stuff that I want to do but it's just me okay it, it is just me and so like I just oh y'all y'all that really spoke to me. I'm not going to even lie. And I think that... <laughs> yo, that really spoke to me. The, I've been saying the abundance is here. The overflow is here. The overflow is my podcast. The overflow is my, my YouTube channel. And I, I know y'all are like, Danielle, how is that the overflow? Like, how is that? Like, some people, when they listen to this podcast, like, you're being encouraged. Like, you are... The, the, the overflow is my prayer call in the morning. Like, that's evoking something into you. Like, that's my overflow. That's my abundance. It's able to help people give them something, you know help people in whatever kind of way that they need to be helped this is my overflow this is the abundance being able to give just outside of my practice my practice is my main source of income but this right here being able to help y'all being able to you know all of this is overflow like I said sometimes it's not just financial gain. Sometimes it's wisdom. Sometimes it's 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 um wisdom. It's encouragement. It's really like when I tell you guys that I be like I am dead serious. When I be like, if you having a bad day, I need you to turn it around. I need you to stop. I need you to fix that. Turn it around and start declaring that you're gonna have a great day. That is with the boldness. Like I'm t like yo. <laughs> Just thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. I mean that. I mean it with all sincerity from the bottom of my heart where I want you, even if you're having a bad day, to be like, let me go listen to Danielle. And I want you to be like, let me, hopefully I say something to penetrate your heart so that it can turn your day around, so that it can shift the way you think. You know, like a lot of time it's our mindset that we have to, um, we have to change and we, and we so resistant to change. And sometimes it's just like, stop being so resistant to change and go with the flow. That's why some people is actually having such a hard time with the whole COVID-19 because of the uncertainty. Like it's, it went from people saying day to day it's changing. The news is reporting. It then went from day to day, from hour to hour, and sometimes minute to minute how this stuff is changing. And we don't know. This is the uncertainty that we don't know what's going to happen with the world. And so, but we do know what's going to happen with God. We don't know what's the uncertainty of the world, but I need you to remember and I need to, for you to have, to not resist the change that comes with the word with the world but what i need you to do is have faith in the word i need you to stand on the promises of god i need you to stand on the word of god i need you to know 
that he's going to be with us. I need you to know that he's going to keep us. I need you to know that he's Jehovah Jireh. I need you to know that he's Jehovah Shalom. I need you to know that he is God and we are connected to him. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knew that this was going to happen. He knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb. Like he knew this. He knew this was going to happen. He knows you. He knows you was going to worry. He knows you was going to stress. But he's like, come back unto me, my daughter, my son. Hide in his tabernacle. Hide in him. Okay? Like, yo, I remember last week when I was, um, because I was like, where's the scripture that talks about how God would hide me and stuff like that? And I can't even give you the scripture, the, um, I can't give you the verse. Or whatever. But it's several different verses that I found. And it talks about how God would hide you in his tabernacle. How God would hide you and he still will provide for you. If you need God to hide you during this time. Ask God to hide you in your in his tabernacle. Where he will provide for you during this time. Because it's just so much going on for you to take. Ask God to hide you. Go there. You know, go there, be there, allow him, you know, and then take this time right here for us to study and really get into our word. Like, y'all, I'm going to really start studying the book of Exodus because I need to understand when I was telling my mama, I was like, girl, I'm going to start studying the book of Exodus because, you know, that's where the plagues me personally. I feel like the coronavirus is another plague that God, um, that God actually just put out. It may not be, I don't know, but like I said, it's my personal belief. But so I was like, I need to go to the book of Exodus because I need to understand what did the people do during this time? What did the Israelite folks do? I, I want to know how they felt because I need to know about their mindset, you know, like how did y'all really make it during this time? And let me learn from y'all mistakes because the Israelites, they actually um they they did a lot of complaining which made god mad and then some of them never seen the promised land and because they complained and they were telling god you took us from pharaoh to this because we they were out in the wilderness so they come there one thing that i'm learning from them do not complain yo if y'all if anything the Israelites complained. And when I say they complained, they complained. And at first I was just like, God, Lee, like, yo, y'all, y'all doing all this complaining. Like, yo, y'all got Moses. Moses, go talk to God. Like, y'all got this direct connection. And so I was just like, and so someone was just like, that be y'all too. That be you too, Danielle. You be complaining. So I had to come on back and eat some of that. Like, cause yo, we do be like the Israelites sometimes, child. We do be complaining because we don't know. But even though they had signs and wonders of God, yo, y'all, like God showed y'all so many signs and y'all still complained. And that's me looking, looking out, you know, from the outside and inside. I don't know how they, you know. Like, if I was back then, would I be one of the Israelites? Would I be one of them that's doing all this complaining? Like, because I'm in it. Right now, I'm not in it. So, that's what I'm learning from that. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to complain. Like, Jesus, please. I ain't complaining. But, uh, help your girl out, please. So, that's why I really started shifting. I started praying about shifting my mindset. About not being resistant to the change and stuff like that. Because the more we resist the change, the more difficult it tends to be. So, now I'm trying to shift my mindset. I'm trying to create the peace that I need. I'm trying to pray more. I'm trying to meditate more. I'm trying to create that peace. I want to get out the house and go walking, walking, walking. I ain't going nowhere else, child. Okay? So, like, yo... Because of what's going on and, and limiting myself on social media too. Because of what's going on, I'm trying to, you know, like not be so caught up in it and just be to myself. All right, y'all. Like I didn't went off on a whole tangent, y'all. This, I pray that this podcast is helpful to somebody. 
Um, yeah, because right now, I I I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't talk for about forty minutes, okay? And um, yeah. I just pray that this podcast help somebody and I pray that y'all get it and understand. But nonetheless, I love you guys and I will see you guys next week. Bye later. Holla. Jesus loves you and so do I. And there's nothing you can do about it. I love you guys. Bye y'all. Talk to y'all next week.